السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ ڈیئر ویورز آل اراؤنڈ دا ورلڈ اینڈ ان آور خان کا ویلکم ٹو آور ٹینتھ سیشن آف نائنتھ سیشن آف تسکیہ کانفرنس اینڈ تسکیہ ورک شاپ بینگ ہیلڈ ان نیو یارک اٹس این امیزنگ ٹائم اگین دیٹ وی ہیو گیدر ٹو گیدر ہیئر ٹو امپروو آور آور لائف فار دا ورلڈ ہیئر آفٹر اینڈ دیٹ ول آٹومیٹکلی امپروو آور لائف ہیئر ان دس ورلڈ سو انٹل اپ انٹل دس ٹائم وی ہیو ڈسکسڈ نائن پوائنٹس آف تصوف اینڈ ٹوڈے از دا لاسٹ پوائنٹ دا ٹینتھ پوائنٹ آف تصوف وچ ہیز کنڈینسڈ آل دی امپارٹنٹ ایسپیکٹس آف تصوف ان in in under one category and today's topic of uh, tasawwuf which is the 10th point is sufi o tasawwuf uh, th this is the core this is the core principle of uh, following is spirituality that uh, you you uh, involve yourself in the field of tasawwuf ultimately that leads you to become a sufi sufi saint or a sufi person uh, the definition of tasawwuf or spirituality or sufism as some people said it uh, maybe they said it in a negative tone but it has no negative annotation to it uh, it's not a movement it was not never a movement it has always been a very very integrated part of the religion of islam that anybody who wants to accomplish nearness to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has to follow uh, the pattern which was laid out by rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so it's never been a movement which was described by some people in the past and they tried to derail muslim ummah uh, from the from the very uh, fine and and purified path of the sawwuf but uh, apparently you see that that movement did not kick in did not you know, did not really uh, survive and most of the you know the sawwuf and its uh, branches are thriving alhamdulillah so the definition of the sawwuf if you understand that it will become very easy to move on uh, in in simple terms the sawwuf is uh, the purification of your inner soul uh, for Uh, so the ultimate being the, the the supreme being the commander in chief of all the entire universe allah subhanahu wa taala comes in your heart it is also known as the purification of hearts i like i just said how is it proven from shariat this is a common question that how is tasawwuf proven from shariat it is one of the bedrock principles of the duties of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sent down to earth he was given four main responsibilities and duties to carry out and that is described well in quran pak who allazi ba'sa fil ummiyina rasulan minhum yatlu alayhim ayatihi wa yuzakkihim wa yu'allimuhum alkitab wal hikma here in this beautiful ayat allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clearly delineated four duties of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam by saying that it is he allah who has sent down a prophet among the illiterate ones who teaches them who recites them the verses of quran who purifies their heart who teaches them the meanings of quran and hadith so so what we deduce from it we deduce that one of the very very important duties of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was to purify hearts of all the humanity now how does this flow down to the rest of the ummah because this is another objection that sometimes arise that that was the role of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and only he could perform such duties not everybody in the uh, community or in the in the in the nation yes that is true not everybody can uh, hold such a big responsibility of purifying hearts not everybody can be a professor not everybody can be a doctor not everybody can be an engineer uh, these are special tasks and everybody is designed to perform those tasks so is the responsibility of purification of hearts which is given to certain people of ummah which who become who become saints and sufis or ulamas of this uh, lineage who can who are authorized to purify hearts of other people and uh, that also by the will of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because in the next ayat we can clearly see the fact that al uh, ulama wa rasatul anbiya that uh, is a hadith that uh, ulama are the inheritors from from the prophets what does that mean do do ulama inherit gold and money and material wealth from um, from uh, prophets no they inherit 
the ilm, they inherit the deen and the effort of deen to propagate in their generations. Other hadith mentions the fact that the role of alim in your community is like the role of a, of a, of a prophet in, in their nation. So here Rasulullah's will is to give you the importance of an alim, of a Sufi in the community that they are authorized to purify the hearts of people. Not everybody can purify that. Now, coming to stages of purification, uh, one important point I would like to highlight before we go on to the stages of purification. I hope everybody's caffeine is kicking in right now and you don't feel overwhelmed by the fact that there's so much detailed information about the Savuf. I will like it light, I, I will keep it light and crisp. In the interest of time also, I will keep it brief. But you have to understand that as you progress and advance in any field, you have to dive deep to understand the reality. So don't feel bored. I will try to keep it interesting also. One very fine and sublime point about the Tasawwuf is that it does not dismiss your desires. It just redirects your desires for a bigger and better cause. This is another great objection which is laid out to the people who are following the line of the Tasawwuf is, oh, you will be detached from the world. You will, you will be made secluded from the world. You will lose all interest in life. You will be inhibited and you will, you will go into depression because you will lose all interest in life. No, it's not that. It's not true. It's not. It's not that by any definition. Islam, uh, the, the Sufism, the Sufism does not dismiss your desires. It only redirects them in the right path. For example, everybody has anger, and Sufism and the Sufism it channelizes your anger in the right direction instead of you know showing that anger to humans. It directs your anger towards Shaitan instead of hating the sinner. It teaches us to hate the sin. Instead of indulging in illegitimate love of mortal beings who, who will vanish this face of earth, Sufism teaches you to go and look for the love of that ultimate being which is never going to perish, which is never going to, uh, which is ever going to stay there, which is always around, which will always stand on your side, which will, which is, who is always trustworthy and fully reliable. That is the, the, our sweet uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want to have love, have love with such a permanent being who is always on your side, not the one who you cannot trust 100%. And also, Tasawwuf teaches you to compete against, um, against each other for good deeds. Don't compete against each other for material wealth. If you have the sense of competition, compete, use that sense of competition for a better gain, for a better cause. That is, Islam teaches us, Quran teaches us, compete against each other for better, uh, for better, for good deeds, not for material wealth. Now, coming to the stages of purification. It's very interesting to understand the, these stages of purification. It will have some Arabic jargons in it, but I will try to simplify them. Uh, if you want to understand the stages of purification, first uh, envision yourself on a barren piece of land. Uh, a farmer is given a barren piece of land, which is full of brambles and poisonous roots and weeds on all the plot of land. And now he is given the task to grow some good uh, flowers and fruits and vegetables on it. How will he begin? Just think and imagine about it. Will he start the seeds of flowers? Will he start sowing those seeds right in the ground and he will wait and he will just water them and he will wait that the crop will grow out? This is never going to happen. I have never seen any farmer doing that. What is his first step always? To cleanse out the land right to weed out all the poisonous roots to weed out all the weeds and uh, brambles and unwanted branches and everything right S to cleanse the land right so that is our first step in tazkiyah also that is called tasfiyah nafs the cleansing of your inner soul by that i mean that you try to work on your land of uh, of heart by cleansing it from different ailments that may have rooted in your heart. For example, jealousy that we just heard about, arrogance, malice, backbiting, miserliness, greediness, and many other uh, uh, you know, spiritual ailments that can get rooted in our hearts. Uh, 
Just like a farmer does a um, soil testing to get the quality of the soil, he, is a, uh, he, he goes to, a, to an expert who does the soil testing and it's a big business all over the world to do soil testing. Likewise, there's a, there's a heart tester, a diagnoser, a, a, a specialist to check out, check out our hearts. He is the spiritual Sufi leader or sheikh who can diagnose and determine what's problem in this soil of your heart. Just like there's a soil tester for the soil of the land. So once he diagnoses that, he gives you that diagnosis that you have jealousy, you have miserliness in your heart, you have, uh, you know, arrogance or something like that. Then you, you, you pinpoint those problems and then you start working to weed them out of the heart. So once the land of your heart is cleansed out of the ailments of these, uh, uh, cleansed from these ailments, next step is to, is to, irrigate the soil right you just don't start to put um, put the soil or put the seeds in the soil but you irrigate the soil you put like some good chemicals to grow the soil similarly uh, uh, similarly in tasawwuf there is a next step in which you polish your heart uh, you try to you know uh, you know put some good you know efforts in the heart to polish it so that it becomes shiny and reflective with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this next step is the tajalliya nafs that it becomes receptive to all the things that you're going to sow which is the third step which is the tahliya nafs now once the farmer clears the land he has irrigated with water and he has put all the good chemicals now he starts to sow seeds similarly our sheikh determines that now this is the time to sow seeds of love, se seeds of caring for humanity, se seeds for sympathy, for empathy, for patience, or for, uh, for rina, or for sufficiency in your heart. So only then you start to grow uh, the good crops of these good characteristics from your heart. So uh, I hope that was able, uh, I was able to make you understand some of the basic concepts that how, is, how spiritual cleansing happens and how good crops of uh, good characters take root in your heart. After, after going through the process of uh, cleansing the heart, we have to understand that what are the ingredients of tasawwuf? Uh, what is purification made of? Right? It has three main ingredients. It has three main, um, uh, you know, ingredients on which all the tasawwuf is based upon. Number one is kamil tawheed. Number second is kamil taqwa, and third is kamil muhabbat. Uh, some Arabic jargons, but I will translate them into English so that you know we can all understand. Uh, kamil tawheed is the is the is the complete belief in the oneness and singularity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the most important founding principle for tasawwuf if, if somebody is following all other principles and working hard on tasawwuf but is devoid of kamil tawheed he is not reaching the goal he is a failure First of all, you have to embrace the singleness, the, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why we are taught la ilaha illallah. There is no one worship worthy of worship except Allah. And Allah himself introduces him in one uh, place in Quran. He is in the beginning, he is in the end. He is the manifest and he is the hidden one. And he is all knowing about everything. So, complete oneness and complete singularity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be imbued in our hearts for us to embark on the journey of tasawwuf. So, second ingredient of tasawwuf, how tasawwuf is built up is complete um, kamil taqwa. That means that you have a, a complete obedience to the do's and don'ts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot cherry pick the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to abide by every do's and don'ts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which are laid out to you. Of course, Allah is our creator. He knows, he, he knows his machinery best. He knows what is good for his machinery, how to oil it, when to oil it, and what to feed it, what not to feed it. So we have to take all those do's and don'ts in totality. Only then we can achieve the journey uh, and, and, and the destination in tasawwuf. If we start to cherry pick uh, the things in, um, in taqwa, then it may not lead us to the destination.
What happens when you start working for your taqwa? You get two things. One is, in the Allah ma'al lazina taqaw. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very clearly says that Allah ta'ala comes in the company of that person who is fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a strange, you know. You, uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a big synopsis of all and of the entire life that a human can spend on. What, what it means is that you, you start to stay, uh, you know, stay away from sins and Allah Ta'ala starts to come in your company and He stays with you. So you get the company of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala if you start being fearful of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And second is definitely He gives you Hidayat. Whenever Allah is with you, He will give you Hidayat and He will show you the right path out of the most, you know, out of the hardest times or out of the most uh, indefinite situations, he will take out a uh, clear path for you. So the third ingredient of tasawwuf, which is equally very important, is the complete and, uh, you know, final love for, us, for, for, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, kamil muhabbat. It is the main driving force in tasawwuf. What drives you on? You, your love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and your efforts, your achievement to, to gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defines people uh, in terms that وَالَّذِينَ amanu أَشَدُّ حُبَّ اللَّهِ Those people who have believed are most fervent in loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is very important for us to understand the three ingredients of the tasawwuf. Uh, there are some uh, operating principles which uh, our Sheikh has very nicely laid out for us. Uh, they are all taken, they are 10 points pr operating principles which we should all try to adopt in order to advance in the line of Tasawwuf. They are all taken from Surah Muzammil and they are written down in a special order. Number one is that uh, Sufi, a person, uh, sorry, a Salik uh, who is struggling in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to atta attain nearness of Allah, he will wake up in the last part of the night, which is a very dedicated time to talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no distraction for you, your mind is free uh, of distractions, and it's very easy for you to become connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second point, uh, the second operating principle of our tasawwuf or, or purification is tahajjud. Then you offer the salat of tahajjud, uh, you know, that you start talking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Third is you recite quran Karim slowly so that you can understand the meanings of Quran and also you get the feelings what, uh, that is, what uh, those words are conveying to you. And fourth is that you start to take control of the bad nafs, the carnal nafs, the nafs that uh, is that is bothering you and that is derailing you from the bigger from the bigger cause. So how you start to subdue your bad self, inner self? You have to do zikr, you have to con yeah, contemplate, you have to meditate, and you have to adopt various other spiritual practices as laid out by your sheikh. Number five. Excessively doing zikr of Allah's personal name, Allah. And that is commonly taught by our Shaykh also, that it is the easiest way to perform zikr, that wherever you are, you can easily remember Allah by uh, calling out His personal name, Ismizat. Zikr Ismizat. Allah, Allah, Allah. This we are supposed to be doing each, all the time, and in any occasion or anywhere uh, that, we, uh, that we are in. And number six is seclusion from the world to engage in worship. Always take out some time to seclude yourself from rest of the distractions so that you can, you can completely focus in, in your ibadat and in your worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number seven is uh, total reliance and trust on Allah. That Allah is my uh, complete caretaker. You know, there is no one who can, you know, take care of me, who can provide me any sustenance except Allah. You have to have a total reliance and trust on Allah. This is the seventh operating principle. The next one is uh, that you be patient with the creations, oppressions and aggression. You might come across people who will, who will taunt you, who will mock you, who will criticize you, and who will try to derail you from a bigger cause of the sawuf, but you have to be patient in the, in the face of those calamities. Number nine is and is that is stay away from opponents uh, to avoid confrontations. Uh, you are not supposed to, you, 
you face off with such people and confront with them, uh, you know, just to start fitna and fights and all that. You stay focused in your own uh, ashghal and duties and inshallah that will keep you on the straight path. Uh, last but not the least is you always stay away from the arguments and debates with people. Stop debating with people. You, you have uh, found a good sheikh, you have found good askar, you don't have time to waste on such useless debates where they are not going to ever reach at a conclusion. They will always raise new points and doubts against uh, Tasawwuf is spirituality and they will waste your time away. You don't want to waste time away like that. So these are the operating principles by which uh, Salik operates uh, and he you know, finally reaches his destination. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to work hard on our journey of Tasawwuf and may Allah uh, you become our friend. Ameen. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad.